So oftentimes in multivariable functions, it's very hard to draw a graph. You know, if we have a function of two variables and the output is one variable, then that graph is going to be three-dimensional. So you can imagine if we have any more input variables, then the graph is going to be even higher dimension. So we need, obviously we need some alternative methods to visualize a function besides making a graph. If we have a real valued function, remember real valued just means the output is a single real number. We can make what's called a level set of the function. And so a level set of a real valued function is the collection of all of the points in the domain where the function has a constant value. So for example, say we have this function t and it's a function of x and y. And so this function t gives us the temperature at a certain point on a piece of paper. So we specify the point with x and y, and then the function gives us the temperature at the point. So if we were to make a level curve of this function at 5, a level curve being just a picture of a level set, then that means that at every point on the curve, the temperature is 5. So the idea of a level set is you're grouping all of the inputs that lead to the same output. So if I walk around this level curve, then the temperature will never change. And so this is just one level curve of the function, where the, I set the function equal to 5. So we can make a level curve for any constant. So I can make a curve where the temperature is always equal to 10 or 15 or whatever I want it to. So in general, if we have a function to make a level curve for a certain constant value, all you do is just set the function equal to that value. So you're replacing the output variable, which might be z in this case, with a constant. So let's say we have this function x squared plus y squared. Now the level curves of this function are just circles in the xy plane. Because if we replace the output variable with a constant k, then it just gives us a circle with a radius of square root of k. And so many times we, to get a better picture of the overall function, we draw many different level curves on the same picture. So here are three level curves of this function. And so again, they represent all of the points where the output is the same. So if I'm walking around the green circle, then the value of the function stays at 4. And then if I jump up to the yellow circle, then every point on that yellow circle yields an output of 9. And so if you remember what this 3D graph actually looks like of this function, it's kind of like a bowl. And so notice how if you were to take cross sections of this graph perpendicular to the z axis, you are again setting z equal to some constant and then drawing the cross section at that value of z. So you can see these similarities between making cross sections and level curves. So level curves are basically if you took the cross sections along the z axis and they all fell down onto the xy plane. So the level curves are just a bunch of cross sections perpendicular to the z axis grouped together. And so again, the main advantage of level sets as opposed to graphs is that their pictures have the same dimension as the domain. So you know, in this example, a function was x squared plus y squared. So the domain is two dimensional because the input is a pair of real numbers. And a, a level curves were circles in the xy plane. So again, a level curves lived in two-dimensional space. Whereas a graph of this function lives in three-dimensional space. Now say that we have this function here. The input is three variables. So each point in the input lives in three-dimensional space. 
And so if we wanted to make a graph of this function, it would be in four dimensions because we would need four coordinate axes. One axis for each input, x, y, and z, and then one for the output variable. So obviously, we can't really draw a four-dimensional graph, but we can draw the level curves. Because if we set the output equal to a constant, k, you see that the level surfaces are just spheres of radius square root of k. So again, if we were to walk along any of these spheres, the value of the function is not changing until we jump to a new sphere.